Okay, welcome back, Creatures of the Night. As we continue this journey and look back through Undertaker's many, many gimmick matches. And today we bring to you what we should have brought to you last month before we had to pivot and give you the buried the boiler room brawl match. Not the buried alive, getting ahead of myself. The boiler room brawl match with when we donned our best Undertaker hat and gloves. But now we give you the last ride matches. That's why right, we're giving you a double feature, two for the price of one today. And I wouldn't ask anybody else to join me on this journey of Undertaker's gimmick matches than my good friend from Twitter, Randy Turco. How are you doing today? Good, good. I uh, I saw a meme somewhere online, and I'm going to steal it. Uh, I saw I saw a meme where they had a lawyer dressed in a suit, and he had Ultimate Warrior mask, and he said he was the Ultimate Lawyer. And I'm like, that's that's my new wrestling name. So I'm the ultimate lawyer. I should change my Twitter handle from Pokey's Little Dog to yes, the ultimate lawyer. The ultimate lawyer. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I completely agree. You should do that. Yeah, that that's your that's your new gimmick when you go into the courtroom. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, how excited are you for the Undertaker's two last ride matches today? I'm pretty excited, only pretty because. Excited. I, I know it doesn't, you know, rank up there with the all-time greats, but I I don't know that I've seen either one of these <clears throat> after they happened live. Like, you know, you go back and you watch the Hell in a Cell with Shawn Michaels again and again and again, and the Mick Foley, the Mankind Hell in a Cell. You got to watch that one again and again and again. I don't know that I've seen either of these since 04 and 06. I don't know that I've had a reason to oh. go back and revisit them. So it was kind of like... It's kind of like when you have something kind of put away in a trunk for years and years, and then you rediscover it and you're like, damn, this is like a little Christmas present, you know? Right? Yeah. 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 I know I've seen the Mr. Kennedy one more than I've seen the JBL one. Okay. So I think I just revisited the Mr. Kennedy one maybe a couple years ago. Was there a particular reason or you just haven't watched 04 matches that much? I just haven't watched. I didn't, you know, I don't care for Undertaker's 2004. Other, you know, besides the WrestleMania with Kane. The return, yeah. And, and the Judgment Day with Booker T. That one's pretty good. Sure. But, you know, as we'll get into later on in the year, the Concrete Crypt, that's not the best. Uh, the JBL feud is not the best. And um, I guess, you know, they swing it around with the, um, the Fatal 4-Way at Armageddon. You know, he's got Booker T right. and Eddie Guerrero in there with him. So you got, you know, you get a little bit of a good mix. But uh, Undertaker's 2005 is much better. Yeah, 04 does kind of take a nosedive after he returns as the dead man. You just, yeah. you don't, it's kind of revisionist history. Everybody kind of says, oh, 04, he's the dead man. What a great year. But you forget. Yeah, you forget get JBL, Heidenreich, Dudley Boys. You know. And the JBL run, I mean, I think history has been kind to it. Like you look back on it and you're like, okay, that wasn't too terrible. But I distinctly remember at the time, I hated it. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes, he was our Triple H from yeah. Raw. JBL was SmackDown's Triple H's Reign of Terror. Ah, oh. the cow, the cowardly heel who always found a way to get out cheaply for like, I mean, not even two hundred plus days. It was a long time. I mean, which that sounds like nothing compared to Roman Reigns right now. But it felt uh, like an eternity it felt like an eternity back then. Yeah, I, I remember thinking like, I think I told my friends like, I'm not watching SmackDown until he's done. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of it. So I remember being quite against JBL. And now I look back on it now and I'm like, yeah, it wasn't so bad, but that's, you know, 20 years later. <laughs> yeah. 20 years later. Can you believe that? Right. It's crazy. It's crazy. But, um, we are on Peacock season six, episode one, no mercy, 2004 clocking in at two hours, 11 minutes and 40 seconds. Can they just fix how they do it on the menu? I get sick of doing the math every month where I'm like, okay, this is 2004. Well, um, I, I miss the chapters from the network. Oh my gosh. Oh, that would be chapters. Too. Oh, that was perfect. Like I'm, I'm an attorney. Like we don't do math. We become attorneys to avoid math. And I'm like, okay, no mercy started in 98. This is Oh four. So like, okay, carry the, carry the three this is so this is season six like it's just terrible every and i always guess wrong it always takes me three or four guesses to get it in there i know i know uh but see that's why that's why we we do the notes beforehand so we get everything squared away so when we come here 
no, we don't have to act like complete idiots trying to figure out which one it is. Not complete idiots, yes. Not, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so are you ready? Always ready, yes. They oh, oh, um, Like a young Matt Cardona, you are always ready. Yeah, they, um, they're they showing throughout the night. Uh, I kind of scrubbed through the pay-per-view to see if there's any taker things beforehand. Mm -hmm. And they do show, uh, they're showing highlights of all of his title wins they're giving you the feeling that he's going to win the belt tonight because they show him beat hogan in 91 and again in 02 they show him uh beat sid in 97 so you're getting the vibe like this is it man like the dead man just came back at, at wrestlemania and like he's gonna win he's gonna win his championship tonight jbl's had it a while and you're thinking and he already um jb already beat him at SummerSlam, so you're thinking this is this is it this is yeah it's unlike uh, last month when uh, member mankind had home field advantage with the boiler room brawl. This is an undertaker type match. So you're thinking exactly. this is it, man. He's going to win this belt back. And uh, of course we know it turns out differently. Yes. Yes. So of course, you know, as undertaker fans, whenever you have an undertaker style match and you get your hopes up, it's usually, you know, you should have got your hopes up. Yeah. It's kind of funny too. Cause uh, JBL gives a promo and I, I don't remember this kind of stuff at all. It's very 2020, 2022 in 2004. And he's talking about how this whole pay-per-view, this whole company showing these moments all night about the undertaker's championship wins as if he's going to win the belt over me tonight. He says that it's um, the WWE is as biased as the liberal media. And I'm just like, oh my God, like, oh I don't know. Oh my remember. God, that's, that's like exactly what you would hear now. Right. I'm like, this is 2004. And this is, I don't remember any of this talk in 2004. Oh my God. And he's playing as my friends and I called him back then. He's playing uh, George Bush on steroids. That's the character, not on literal steroids, but like, he's just a big man compared to George Bush. But well, yeah, if you would see JBL, you would not say steroids. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, he, he was just like the WWE is as biased as the liberal media. And the only way Taker's going to get the belt tonight is literally over his dead body. And with those words, <laughs> I say we count it down. Are you sure. ready? Of course. Perfect. So three, two, one, play. Now we get Tony Chimmel introducing us to the match. And Tony Chimmel, I think, is going through the rules, which basically are no DQ, yeah. no count out. You got to stuff them in the hearse. And, you know, one thing that's important that people miss, you got to drive out of the arena with them, too. That's right. Not enough just to put them into the car. You got to drive out of the arena with them as well. Yeah, that's right. I do enjoy that throughout this entire match on Peacock, the closed captioning types the word hearsed. Like Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Like Hunter huh? Hearst Helmsley. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> and so the first entrant is the car. I thought this is the Undertaker at first, but this is the car uh, coming out to the Undertaker's 1990 theme, his original theme. Interesting. Uh, with the very fashionable No Mercy license plate. <laughs> of course. <laughs> It looks black there, but when they turn the um, when they turn the lights off, it's quite blue. Can't believe they're giving an entrance to the hearse. The car gets an entrance, and what's cool about this is that because this car is parked right there, JBL can't have his entrance with the limo. Like that's usually oh, pulls out right darn. there. Only one car gets an entrance today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so JBL's got to walk himself out right now uh, as the champion. He's just got to walk out like a wiener because he can't use his car. My gosh. It was kind of cool seeing the, um, the buildup to this match. JBL pays for the ministry to come back, members of the ministry, certain members, to attack The Undertaker. So Viscera and Gangrel. Mm-hmm assault the undertaker and ultimately the undertaker does dispatch with them. And then I thought you'd be a fan undertaker retaliates by hanging Orlando Jordan from JBL's cabinet. Yes. He, I hangs, him, he hangs him on the symbol. And I'm like, Oh man, Steven's going to love this. It's not Austin, but it's close enough. <laughs> I remember, I, I, I remember that they had JBL look to the rafters and then the, the light sh uh, shined on it. I remember that. Yeah. 
as that's you know that's controversial in 2004 it was controversial in 98 right it's especially six years later yeah we're no longer in the attitude era we're in the ruthless aggression era but still yeah, yeah. controversial yeah i i remember that moment him hanging orlando Jr. i remember the ministry coming back Right. This one on Gangrel, him defeating them in a two on one handicap match. <laughs> right. I was like, what year is this? We're hanging people on crosses, Ministry of Darkness. Right. They're well, playing all the hits. They're playing all the hits. The whole reason for this match was that JBL had a hearse out there. He was having a funeral for the Undertaker's title chances because he said that Undertaker after SummerSlam was never going to get another one ever again. And then Teddy Long, holla holla comes out and says, I'm the one who makes the matches here. And you know what? Not only is he going to get a title shot, but this car is giving me some inspiration. We're going to have a last ride match. So I think it was Teddy Long and not The Undertaker who invented the last ride match. Wow. It just came to him like that. Right. Yeah. Amazing. Right. Yeah. He's got, he's got the name of it and everything. <laughs> it's crazy. Teddy Long's a genius. He is. Here and not come. only will he get this title chance, he would also get one at Armageddon. So JBL was wrong quite twice. Right. Yeah. I don't know why he thinks he could just hold a funeral and say he's done getting title chances. Um, yeah, I mean, there was that wasn't the stipulation at SummerSlam. I don't. I don't know where he got that from. But. And this is back in the day where they would do. You know, unless it was a big four like SummerSlam, then it would be a, a, both shows were on SmackDown. But then. Uh, September Unforgiven is just raw. Yeah. And then, so the SmackDown guys got to wait on their story and kind of stall mm -hmm. until No Mercy here in October. Yeah, it was crazy that they had show specific shows. Yeah. So if it, if your show is not going to get a pay per view that month, you've got to really stall your, you got to drag your feet a little bit on your storylines. Yeah. You had to put people out of commission. You had to just do like baby backstage promos. Right. Yeah. You had to draw that thing out there. Or, you know, maybe blow off some feuds just on TV, like the whole uh, Austin Booker T grocery store thing that never went to pay per view, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the uh, JBL is, uh, of course, converted himself into this main event champion from, from an acolyte. Um, but he had that, uh, have more money now book, right. In the summer of Oh three, yeah. he's got that book out on, and he's also appearing on, is he on Fox news or CNN or maybe both? I can't remember, but he would appear on there giving financial advice. So between the book and his TV appearances, they kind of just turned it up to 10 and here he is. He's, he's kind of turned his yeah. career around again. They've come a long way because I looked it up JBL and the undertaker main evented raw on April 1st, 1996, when he was Justin Hawk Bradshaw. So he has come a long way, folks. Yes, he has. From Justin Hawk Bradshaw to a Blackjack, to an Acolyte, to APA, and now right. finally JBL. And Undertaker's been along for the whole ride. I remember when they broke up the Acolytes and Ron Simmons kind of like was forced into retirement. I remember thinking JBL's done. They tried doing the JBL singles run in 02 when he was basically just being an acolyte JBL, an APA yes. JBL by himself. Yeah. I thought he's done. There's this is never gonna work. And then he started doing this and off he goes, you know. As much as I hated it. Oh, of course. Every, everybody hated it. All right. Well, being a history guy. I was used to the initials LBJ for Lyndon Baines Johnson, the 36th president. So it took a while for me to get JBL. And I, I would always say LBJ. I'd be like Mike Tyson saying Cold Stone. Like he could never get Stone Cold right. For something in his brain, he always said Cold Stone. I always said LBJ. So it took me a while to get used to the whole JBL thing. Oh, we're start, starting out like a house of bricks here. Two big loudmouth Texans. I mean, you know, they go they go quite well together. Yeah, you got the best striker in the game, like taking the early lead here with all these right hands. 
Nick Patrick, the heel referee, is the ref from WCW? Of course, I remember that. Remember when he wouldn't count for WWF people? And he <laughs> I remember that, yeah. <laughs> Undertaker just destroying JBL out of the gate. Yeah. It's always like that with JBL matches. He always gets beat up and he finds a way to win. Very Ric Flair in that in that way. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna go for old school. Oh, we're going for old school early. So if you tried old school or a trademark move this early on like No Mercy video game, you would get reversed for sure. Oh, of course. Reversed. <laughs> you probably get reversed and probably get a low blow or something. Right. And here he goes. Ooh. And he hits it. Yeah. So I talk monthly about how he never hits this damn thing. But I mean, he's hit it almost every time we've had a podcast. So maybe I need to right. change the tune. Yeah. Yeah, you have to change it until next time and then he won't hit it. Won't hit it, right? <laughs> This match, the way it kind of unfolded for me, again, I haven't seen this probably since 04. It reminded me a lot, and you tell me what you think, of Hell in a Cell 97 against Shawn Michaels, where Taker's coming for revenge mm -hmm. for some reason yep. against, against this perceived inferior opponent. He gets a match that's his home field advantage, whether it be the cage or this last ride thing. And everybody's talking about how this guy is never going to survive against the undertaker in this environment. He is just going to be dead. They just keep building it up. Like the undertaker is just going to destroy this guy. And the undertaker comes out and dominates most of the match. Yeah. And then of course at hell in a cell Kane debuted, Shawn Michaels gets away with, you know, the bloody heap. He's still the winner. Yeah. And we'll see how this match turns out. But I was like, this reminds me of exactly. hell in a cell 97. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that's a very good comparison. The Undertaker, you know, dominating the whole match. And then it's just like something stupid, something you didn't even see coming. And it, right. and it just forces him to lose for something. It's like um, almost like almost like the highway to hell with Stone Cold. He's dominating that whole match. Sure. Austin also gets a low blow on him and then a stunner and then it's over. Right. It's just how things are. We Luckily, I remember it, especially at that. Yeah. Especially at that time, I knew it's against Austin. Don't get excited, but yeah, he did dominate a lot of that match. Yeah. We have to suffer sometimes as Undertaker fans. Right. <laughs> oh, now going for the, uh, is he going for the leg drop on the apron already? Right. Like he's hit old school. I think he's hit snake eye, uh, choke slam. And now he's going for the leg drop on the apron. And as we know, that is the part of the ring that hurts the most. Of course. Is the, is the apron. First the elbow across the trach. Of course, Undertaker's hair is getting longer from WrestleMania 20. Yeah, we'll have to see when we do um, Survivor Series 03 eventually, which is a buried alive against Mr. McMahon. You can tell, like, Biker Taker starting to let that hair grow out over his bandana a little bit. Like he was getting ready, you know? Yeah. Oh, here comes the leg drop. Oh. oh. So Taker's hit all these signature moves. So even watching this back 20 years later, 18 years later, I'm thinking, how the hell does he lose this? <laughs> He's killing him. I know. And he does look at the car. Is he going to lead him down there? Nope. You got a shot of the car. Say, I remember uh, Taker for all of his domination. Like the whole point of this match is to take him to the car and get him in it and drive away. And Taker is owning JBL here. Like short of a tombstone, he's done it all. Take him to the car. And he doesn't, yeah. he doesn't take him to the car. He's just kind of. I think if, I think if anything, they're going to battle outside here and eventually go to the Spanish announce table. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's just like spirit of life matches. Like, like when he's fighting McMahon, 
he fights him all around the ring until he finally, when he, McMahon's like almost like dead, he just takes sure. him to that graveyard. <laughs> and I get it. Probably the um, psychology here is he's pissed at JBL and wants him to really suffer. Sure. But I'm thinking like in the video game, I'd be like, okay, let's do a special and let's get him to the car. You know? yes. <laughs> yes. I think like the way you think, you think like it's, you're playing in a video game. Right. Yeah. Here we go to the Spanish table. Oh, what a mistake. You can't win over there. <laughs> oh my God. See those stairs? That's JBL's like first offensive move of the entire night. <laughs> What's JBL's first offensive move? He hits him in the face of the stairs. Yeah, it's a pretty good offensive move right there. I actually thought Taker would be blading after that, but he didn't. I don't think. And it's nice this being the main event of the night. They can uh, they can rearrange the furniture and nobody cares because there's nothing after this. Yeah, you're just helping out the people that would do it anyway. Right. Yeah. We'll do tear down, guys. We got it. Yeah. <laughs> Impressive uh, big boot there from JBL. Uh, it was pigeon toed and kind of hefty. Yeah. Look at JBL. JBL has control of this match right now for five seconds, and he's already leading Taker down the aisle trying to get him towards the car. Like, that's smart. And Undertaker's selling so good with the, the big boot and the, uh, the stair shot. Like, his yeah. way he falls back, it's amazing. Yeah, and there's that second stair shot. I remember when they had those guardrails down the... Uh, the ramp like that. Yes. I was always too poor to like get tickets to sit <laughs> on that guardrail, but that would have been cool. Yeah. But I, I just like, just like the, the shows, I remember seeing it like this instead of now where they have like all that long black, how they have in the front. Right. Yeah. And as we've talked about before, just the design of the stage, every pay-per-view had a theme or a oh, design. Yeah. Look how nice. I love the way this one's designed. With the big logo and, you know, yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, look at that. JBL's trying to use the hearse. That's what you should do. Yeah. Taker's getting out of Dodge. We should have done a punch. You know, between the like you said, these guys are two strikers from Texas. Like we should, uh, we should have, we should have done a punch counter. Too late now. Oh yeah, too late now. I'm not starting over. <laughs> <laughs> I love that inflatable tombstone that they had in the lower. I was literally just about to mention that. I've, I've never seen, seen that before. Yeah. I was just about to say, hey, did you see that inflatable tombstone? Damn, I'm gonna have to Google inflatable tombstone or eBay it after this is over. <laughs> That was a flying shoulder tackle. Was that a botch? I'm not sure if he knew what he was doing. JBL is not known for top rope stuff. Yeah, I was saying, I was just about to say that. Well, why, why is JBL going to the top rope? Shoulder block from Wall Street, I guess. It looked really <laughs> awkward. Oh, and a shake, rattle, and roll. If he was the honky tonk man, this match would be over. <laughs> well, it's a good thing he's not the honky tonk man. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Ooh. Well, Undertaker tapping into that uh little shades of a, a pre um Hell's Gate. Yeah, I think he would get into that in oh 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 it's oh four. So yeah, I think oh oh four, oh five, he starts to do that a little bit more. Taker loves MMA, so he yeah. I could tell that when he brings it into his his wrestling game. And JBL's tapping here, but it doesn't matter because you can't tap. You you have to get somebody in a car and drive away. So <laughs> What a, what a ridiculous concept. Right. You have, to, you have to put him in a car and drive him away. Right. Yeah, he's tapping, but it doesn't matter. But I guess if you make him go to sleep, you, in theory, can get him in the car and drive away. Yeah. The only problem is now he becomes even more dead weight. Yeah, it's true. We needed like a dolly cart or something. A dolly cart. <laughs> Oh, 
I like the make me famous sign in like the fifth row. I mean, that's pretty cool. Although that guy's like four years too late, but all right. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, yeah. The just a born loser. That was classic JBL signs at this time. Oh, JBL. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. Oh, guess what? Taker's in control. So are we going to go to the car and try to win the match? No. We're going to the gonna, Spanish announce table. We're going to work that Spanish announce table again. Taker really hates Carlos Cabrera. Apparently. <laughs> he just ha he just hates the idea of two announce tables there. Right. He needs he, he only wants one. Punch counter going up. Well, the two big strikers, you know, and that's basically the offensive and defensive. Right. Almost, uh, almost the same height. Yeah. In Texas, same ish body type. Both are not afraid to give it or take it it's taker gets thrown into the stairs there man jbl is this a stairs match he's used the stairs on taker that's three times i think i wonder what kind of match there was earlier that has undertaker and jbl both have like all glitter on them oh i don't know yeah they're like a gold dust entrance or something but whatever it was in 04 yeah i wonder what it was i don't know who would use glitter Was Goldust still wrestling in 2004 here? I don't think so. And he came back in like 02, but I, don't, I think he's gone by 04 by a mile. I wonder who it was. Yeah, we'll have to look at the card. Let see. Yes, let's look at uh, No Mercy 2004 match card. Let's see if we who, who we can pin this litter on. Look at this tombstone. He's going to do a trying to do a pile driver from the stairs, and it's going to get reversed into a big back body drop off the stairs onto the floor and if you have the sound on that is a thud it is sickening like that is a bump i would not want to take you want to throw me into tax no problem you want me to thud and do a back smacker off of the uh off of the ring stuffs like this on a big back body drop Ugh. and not gonna take off his feet yeah no thanks we see this card here Eddie Guerrero and Luther Reigns. I don't think it was either of them. Spike and the Dudleys defeated Nunzio with Johnny Stamboli. Eh. Billy Kidman and Paul London. Oh, I think I found our culprit. Kenzo Suzuki and Rene Dupree. I think it was Rene Dupree, possibly. They were the SmackDown tag champs, and they beat Rey Mysterio and Rob Van Dam. Big, big Show and Kurt Angle, John Cena, Booker T. Uh, well, maybe Charlie Haas, Miss Jackie, and Rico. Defeated oh. Don Marie and the Dudley. So maybe it was them. It could be one of those two. Right. One of those two. Working back into the ring here. They briefly went out into the crowd. Yeah. Which I've been in the crowd for something like that. Uh, it's I was there for over the edge. I think when, um, Batista and Cena were wrestling through the crowd in Detroit and I got a chance to like tap Batista's back. Wow. And, but Batista was like wet cause he's sweaty. He's wrestling. And then he's rolling around on this arena floor. So he's picking up all this dirt and debris off of the floor. So I was just, my hand was all wet and dirty. I just remember being like Batista's dirty. Was, yeah. <laughs> Batista's dirty. Oh, here's the tombstone on the steps. Yeah. Here's the tombstone. Also something, I mean, you got to trust the undertaker to do this. Right. Holy cow. Boom. And I mean, I know it's taken something out of take or two here, but uh, you've just, you've nailed, oh, now blading, JBL's blading. Um, he's hit all of his moves, choke slam, snake eyes, old school, the uh, leg drop onto the apron, tombstone on the stairs. 
uh, let's, you should probably take him to the car. I would probably take him to the car. Just like Shawn Michaels busted open and was a huge mess at Hell in a Cell 97. Here's JBL. Yeah. Getting his ass handed to him and he's a bloody mess. You think he's going to lose. JBL's back is bleeding. And I think too, he, uh, they showed him blading and bleeding at SummerSlam. So this is the second pay-per-view in a row that the Undertaker's uh, busted open JBL. Yeah. Made him bleed. He is bleeding profusely. Yeah. He, just put it. He was oh. not high with the blade. And a home run chair shot. Wow. And Taker did get his hand up there, which you see that. And people make fun of that. But I'm like, that's logic. If you see a chair coming at you at 100 miles an hour, what are you going to do? I'm going to try to get my hand up there. It still looked great, I think. You can tell we're getting to crunch time because everything is tombstone onto the stairs, home run chair shot. I mean, it's, everything is ridiculous right now. Definitely getting towards the end. Now we're going to mess with the uh, English table with Taz and Cole. <clears throat> I thought Taker would be bleeding too, but I don't, I don't think he does. Oh, we're going to get him on the table. Taz and Michael Cole holding on to those boxes. Right. They don't want to get disconnected from their headset. I'm sure that would be bad news. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, took too long with the chair. Now we're going to do a choke slam. Oh, I went into the Spanish and I was table. He, he just does not like the Spanish. <laughs> he just does not like the Spanish today. Huge choke slam through a table, tombstone on the chair. Take him to the car. Please take him to the car. <laughs> That's crazy. Again, as a fan, you're thinking, uh, how does he lose this again? Look yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's going to be world champion right here. I mean, they've been promoting it the whole night. How could he not be? Showing all the highlights, getting you ready for it. Yeah. And I am forever the pessimist, especially when Taker was going for the belt. I'd always be like, they're not going to give it to him. But I, I, it's very hard not to think he's going to win here. We're doing a fireman's carry, getting him all the way, trying to get JBL's hefty rear end to the car <laughs> finally taking him to the car finally taking him to the car he's just bleeding all over the undertaker's pants and back this is just like when taker was signaling for a tombstone in the hell in a cell and instead of kane oh. this time we get yeah hide and right like set of kane we get hide and right Boo. And one thing I don't remember, and maybe you do, I don't know if you do off the top of your head. Did he, did he debut before this? Like, do we even know who this guy is or people just like, who is this dude assaulting the undertaker? I don't remember. I don't know. That's like he was, question. he wasn't on the card earlier in the night or anything. And no. I, don't, I don't know if he was on SmackDown before that as he chokes the undertaker out with like, he poured like chloroform on his gloves and like is trying to snuff the undertaker out. He is, Allegedly made him unconscious and oh, shut him in the back. You don't have to, apparently, you did not have to drive him out. They drove you out for you? Maybe they changed the rules. Oh, no. Nope. Undertaker woke up. Not JPLs. Undertaker's so ready to pass torches. And he, man, he tried with Heidenreich, but just Heidenreich was just not, uh, not good. <laughs> Oh, it's terrible. 
it's a two on one affair right now. I mean, it's just impossible. And we're going to have to see a hide and Mike match when we get to the casket in Royal Rumble five. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick that day. <laughs> And the two of them shove the undertaker in the back compartment and bang the door. And I, I, I guess you don't have to drive them away. Maybe that's a rule they made for 06. Oh my God. So JBL wins, I suppose. I suppose. There you go. Your cowardly champion found another cowardly way out despite getting killed. This is, this is absolutely hell in a cell 97. Yeah, it is. JBL will move on and uh, do his next challenger, and Undertaker will move on to Survivor Series against uh, Heidenreich. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I, good thing we don't have to watch that one. Right, right, thankfully. We only have to watch, we only have to watch one Heidenreich match. Yes, and then we can flush it. And we do see who the driver of the, uh, uh, I forgot, the driver of the. Oh, yes. After JBL finishes putting himself over. That's right. How can I forget that the driver is none other than Paul Heyman? Paul Heyman is the driver of the. And he, why did he put the hat on? Like, why did he put the limo driver hat on? <laughs> so he's signaling. Heidenreich to get in OJ Simpson's Ford Bronco and Heidenreich is at the other end of the parking structure. And he's because going to, why else would you not, you know, of course you'd park all the way on the other end. <laughs> he's going to T-bone the hearse like Hulk Hogan did to the rock, you know, 2002, just boom. <laughs> Big explosion as, as, uh, as happens, I guess, every time there's a car accident, giant explosion. And the Undertaker is uh, Undertaker's dead till Survivor Series, I guess. And what I love here is their faces. Uh, Heyman and uh, Heidenreich are like horrified, but then proud of their accomplishment. And then like you start to, if you have the sound on, you start to hear like sirens. And then you hear Paul Heyman like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's get out of here. And then they retreat and the pay-per-view ends as if they can't just watch the pay-per-view to find out who did it, who did it for evidence. Yeah. And it's, and if it could be any more obvious that they didn't record this like earlier in the evening, right? No commentary or anything. Why is Paul Heyman like always a part of Undertaker's career? All, from the very beginning, right? Always. All the way through. Always. He's always there. Yeah. All the way through 30, uh, the, the WrestleMania 30. My God. So now we move on, I would say. Best word to put it. We move on. We do. To, let, me, let me see if I'm I can. Armageddon 2006, yeah. which um where is undertaker uh, undertaker is he the main event no i don't think it's the main event of armageddon 06 i gotta find it in ring yes i gotta find it as well taker does uh as i search for it here taker does go to um uh survivor series to face heidenreich and then like you said at december um he ends up getting in that four way with, um, with JBL for the belt again. And then Heidenreich screws him again and he ends up not getting the belt again. So that is, that sets up Royal rumble. Oh five, the casket match to once and for all get rid of Heidenreich. Yes. And then taker is immediately afterwards challenged by, um, Randy Orton for WrestleMania 21. So yes. A- and in between Heidenreich and Randy Orton, we get Luther Reigns. Oh, hey! But at least we don't have to watch Luther Reigns. We don't. They don't have a. They don't have a gimmick match, do they? We do not have to watch one of those hide and rights. Only have to watch one, and but it's one that, um, you know, you get you get Kane and you get um, Snitsky in there. So quite the interesting pairing. 
Well, JBL would, of course, retain an Armageddon because of Heidenreich. Of course. And then uh, he eventually goes on to WrestleMania 21 to lose his belt finally to young John Cena, who wins his first ever, if you can believe that, first ever world title. Now that he's got like 16 of them. Uh, so they end up uh, dropping the belt to him at WrestleMania 21. And then JBL, before it's all said and done, he, I think by WrestleMania 22, he's US champion. Yes. And then at, by WrestleMania 25 in 2009, he is the Intercontinental Champion, and he ends up losing the IC belt to Rey Mysterio at WrestleMania 25 in like 21 seconds. And he says, after that, I, he says, I quit. So that was essentially his retirement match. Oh, wow. Uh, him and Ray are, I think, good friends. So it was kind of maybe an honor for him to do that. But you kind of like blink and like he went from multiple time tag champ to, you know, this very long reign as the WWE champion on SmackDown, uh, even though it's only one. And then he goes on from there to, you know, he slides in a U.S. title and an intercontinental belt before he retires. And you're kind of like, wow, not a bad, not a bad little career there. That's right. That's right. Gets the Grand Slam. Yes, he does get a Grand Slam in there. Yeah. I'm so, stalling. I'm stalling, obviously, because I had an ad, but I made of course. it. <laughs> 142.50. I, I skipped uh, the promo package and I skipped Kennedy's entrance with his long drawn out speech. Gotcha. Okay. So 142.50, and just the gong has just hit for The Undertaker. You have a lot of contempt for Kennedy. I can, I can sense that. I sensed that last time we did him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> contempt? Yeah, a lot of contempt. My for, contempt uh, for him and Heidenreich, just people that just don't click well. Sure. Sure. And when we get to Giant Gonzalez, you will get the contempt again. <laughs> Oh, of course. I don't, I think that's universal, right? Yes. 142, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Perfect. I can't believe they had Undertaker lose to Mr. Kennedy twice before this. Right. Um, I, you know, I liked that Taker and Kane were like willing to like try to give the rub to MVP and Kennedy during this whole thing. Like, I think uh, um, MVP and Kane had that Inferno match earlier in the night. Yes. And then, you know, him and Kennedy, Undertaker and Kennedy had the first blood match that we covered at Survivor Series. And then they go on to this last ride match here. Um, so I, I like that they were trying to give the uh, the rub to both of those. I don't know if it worked, but um I wouldn't say so, but <laughs> well, and then if you see, I don't know if you scrubbed this pay-per-view too, but Kane wins the Inferno match by literally lighting MVP's ass on fire. Like his literal <laughs> ass, he lit it on fire and MVP ran out of the arena, which I thought was, uh, was hilarious. And then JBL, who was the world champion a couple of seconds ago, 26 months later, two years later, he's already a commentator. How quick that was. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's right. In between, in between championship and retirement, he's a commentator. Yeah. Yeah. He took over for Taz. So he's, he commentates this match and he does say I was in the last and only other last ride match. And he says it shortened my career. Well, yes, because that tombstone on the steel steps. Right. So he's still, I love the long-term storytelling. Yeah. Two years later, he's a commentator. He's retired and he's still selling yeah. <laughs> the last yeah. ride match from 04. Of course. Uh, so I guess we will now see the second of our double feature, the second and last, last ride match. Yep. So One. I am ready if you are. 140.51. Is that what you're on? 142.50. Oh, we got 142? 142.50. Just a moment. Hope, hopefully no, uh, no ads, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. <laughs> <clears throat> got it on 42 43 45 46 47 48 49 go okay three two one go <laughs> and we were just talking about the entrance uh the entrance stage of no mercy i love what they did with armageddon here like this castle this medieval castle yes. thing, which will come into play in the match of no spoilers. Yeah, yeah, you know spoilers. 
But yes, I love the medieval castle. And Undertaker's here, of course, to get revenge for, uh, like you said, two previous losses, but especially last month, I think MVP helped him at Survivor Series in the first mm -hmm. blood match. So Undertaker's here to get revenge for that, which has pushed us all the way to a last ride match. Yeah, Undertaker's got flames now with his entrance, which he didn't have before. Right. And they did use, we fast forwarded through the uh, musical montage, but they did use the end is here or the end is near, like the Armageddon song. I love that Armageddon song. So they did use yes. that here. Undertaker is a month shy from winning the Royal Rumble. He is. He's a month away from winning the Royal Rumble, which you wouldn't think of him being, you know, he's a main event player. Um, obviously, he's a name. He's a legend at this point, but you wouldn't think of him winning the Rumble with, you know, based on the fact that he spent the whole fall fooling around with Mr. Kennedy, you know. <laughs> fooling around with Mr. Kennedy, the great Kali. Yes. Which is classic. Mark Henry. Yeah, 1992, 1993 booking is putting him with Kali. I felt like, am I am I 12 years old again? <laughs> yeah, your your Mark Henry, your Kali. It's the uh, it's like the Kamala and the good giant Gonzalez. Yeah, we also missed the uh, the car did get an entrance again, and it got it this time. It got the Druid music instead of the Undertaker's old music. Oh, nice, nice. And you see right there, it's got the last ride license plate now. Yes, instead of No Mercy. Yes. They, they, they couldn't use the last one. It was demolished by Heidenreich. That's right. They had, to, you know, they had to get a whole new hearse. And I like, instead of parking it like JBL parks his car this time, they worked the bugs out. They parked it, like they backed it up so it's like parallel with the aisleway. So now whoever drives out of this arena can just go forward and right out the entranceway. So yeah. They kind, of, they kind of worked the bugs out like they did with Buried Alive and they got that backhoe out there because the shovels were taking forever, you know? <laughs> and then when the second time after the backhoe, the second backhoe, bigger backhoe. So you don't have to yes. worry about somebody driving the backhoe and not knowing what they're doing. Right, right. They are putting over on commentary right now that Kennedy beat five world champions in 2006 and he is... 2-0 and against The Undertaker coming into tonight. A cowardly 2-0, and but 2-0 and anyway. Cowardly 2-0. And, and we need this look of The Undertaker in figure form from Mattel. Sure. The dark long black hair and the dark goatee and tights. We need this. Absolutely. You don't got to convince me twice to have a good time, you know? Right. <laughs> I liked Mr. Kennedy's shirt too. Yeah, I mean, he just took it off, but it said, um, nice guys finished last. I liked that Kennedy shirt. I liked Kennedy. I, I was rooting for him anyway. It just didn't work out very well. But anybody named Kennedy, I think I said last time it's. Uh, yes, yes, that's yeah. right. That's right. Two months ago, we had Mr. Kennedy again. You must be just in bunches, just overjoyed that this is it, right? No more oh, Kennedy. Yes, of course. I am <laughs> overjoyed before we get to Heidenreich and the great Kali last man standing match. <laughs> yeah, this is like Alex Dorio's contempt for IRS. It's kind of, you know, Mr. Kennedy's right up there for, for you. Oh my God, he hates IRS. Well, he everybody does. hates the IRS. Well, of course, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's only natural that you would hate IRS. <laughs> And it's funny you mentioned Alex Dorio. I just did one with him yesterday. A you did? Along. Yes. Took a look at the Phenom VHS documentary. And he's, yes. Awesome. And he, he says that his name always comes up in our watch along. So that's a ding right there. <laughs> right. It's just and, like um, when Stone Cold Steve Austin has his uh, Broken Skull sessions, Undertaker comes up at least once yes. every time. So Alex oh. is our, our Undertaker. <laughs> yes. And I proposed a three-way watch along one time. Oh my gosh, we we might need him for the um, the one we have planned in October, where it's the matches are just <laughs> unbelievable. We might need that uh, that pick me up, you know, <laughs> just unbelievably bad. Yeah, maybe we'll go through after this match. We'll go through the calendar with everybody. I don't know if you want to do spoilers. Oh, we'll see. Sure, sure. Why not? Because we can always pivot. 
yes, so a card subject to change always. Always, always. Some of the some of the best language Vince McMahon ever came up with. Card yes. subject to change. Uh, take her very tan here, and I, I not that it bothers me, but it always it's it's a stark difference from Taker of 1990, 1991, where he was supposed to be dead. So yes. he was, you know, he's a redhead. So they just let him be pale. Right. And he is very tan here. Yes. Very tan. Just like big evil. I like 2003 undertaker. He's very tan. in all three. Yeah. yeah. Going to the uh, tanning salon with Hulk Hogan, getting that hot dog skin. <laughs> Don't mention Hulk Hogan to the undertaker. <laughs> Taker is about my age here, uh, give or take a year. Uh, and I work out, I'm a, I'm a fairly fit guy. There's no way I could do any of this stuff that Taker's doing in this match. This is ridiculous. It's crazy. It's, it's just, when you look at everything, Taker's just a step back. It's crazy what he does match after match. Right. Even, even in like matches that are not on pay-per-view, Raw and SmackDowns, it's crazy what he does. Uh, by the way, I want to point out that The Undertaker started the match by taking Kennedy where? The, the Spanish, Spanish announce table. <laughs> you can't win there. <laughs> <laughs> it's tradition. It's like the Rose Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Undertaker with red logos, Kennedy with blue shorts. So they have differentiating colors here. Yeah. And Taker, just like the JBL match we just watched, Taker firing out of the gate like a cannon taking that early lead dominating sure and referee intimidation of little nature there he did the same thing to nick patrick too oh yes yeah <clears throat> i feel like the audience is a lot further away from the ring here's this one yeah maybe that's something that they you know, they, your, uh, I think your guardrails are gone too in the aisle way. I think they've made that improvement over the last two years. Probably. Ooh, ooh you almost lost them. And see, so Kennedy got to offense a lot earlier than JBL did, but then Undertaker with that post drive uh, just uh, countered it just like that. Yes. And Taker looked at the car there. He's at least entertaining the idea of the car. And look, he's trying to carry Kennedy to the car. See, I like this. Look at this. this we've done our homework since 04. Undertaker's gotten smarter. <laughs> and now apparently you have to, in this 06 version, you have to drive there's no Paul Heyman in a weird hat. You have to drive the guy out, you know? <laughs> I like, I, you know, I, I like the attention to detail that Paul Heyman wore a hat. Yeah. Why'd you wear the hat, man? You don't, nobody knows. You hey, hey, hey. He's, he's being a chauffeur. He's wearing the chauffeur hat. Right. He's dedicated. Yes. Make sure look inside. Nobody's there. Okay, good. Right. Surprised Kane wasn't in the back or anything. Somebody, yeah. See, Kennedy's trying to get him in the back, trying to shut the door, and I think Taker gets a leg in there or an arm or something and stops it. I love this. They didn't do enough of this in the JBL match. I mean, it was the first one, but, like, let's do some of these false finishes with the car. I, 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 I like that. Yeah, well, they couldn't do it in the JBL when they had Heidenreich. That's true. Oh, good point. Good point. Yes, they would have spoiled it. Right. Well, maybe we wouldn't have saw him. <laughs> Hide under a blanket. <laughs> right. <laughs> they still have the guardrails here. Oh, they do. Yeah. I want you should look back and see when they made that change. Yeah, I'm interested now. Or maybe we'll just find it on this journey that we're yeah, taking. Yeah, we'll just find it. We'll just we'll yeah. come across it. You've got to kind of keep an earmark out to keep looking. Taker's got a pretty, I think if this is it, Taker's got a pretty impressive kick from the floor and he gives him like a big boot to the temple from the floor. Look at that. Like Taker's a seven foot guy and he just kicked him in the ear 
from the floor while Kennedy lays on the apron. It's crazy. I can get his foot that high. And here comes the old leg drop on the apron again. Hardest part of the ring I've heard. Yes. Hitting all the classics already. Just need a, a good tombstone and choke slam. I don't know if you see that sign out in the fifth row. They got your sign that says the tie dye guy. Look at your shirt today. <laughs> they got your, it's like they knew. <laughs> they knew, right? Yeah. I had to check this, uh, this match is in Virginia, not Florida or Chicago. So it was not you who held the sign up, I assume. Oh, good. Good. Just making sure. Yes. I don't know if you were, I don't know if you were long-term storytelling me. Long-term storytelling. <laughs> like I wore this just because I had that sign that day. I'll hold this sign and then I'm gonna have a podcast in like yes. 20 years and then I'll wear the shirt that day. Yeah. That's Paul Heyman chauffeur hat dedication. That's right. That's right. That that is long-term storytelling. <laughs> I think does he hit a superplex here? I mean, this is very this is like Bret Hart technical wrestling going on here. Taker with the superplex. This is very outside our Taker's realm. And the sit-up, too. He's pulling yeah. out all the stops. And you get excited because you're thinking, okay, well, you know, just like Kane interfered at the Hell in a Cell, Heidenreich in the last match, who's going to help Kennedy here? But I don't think MVP's coming because MVP's literally in the back icing his ass after getting, <laughs> after getting it burned by Kane. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't think the cavalry is coming. <laughs> well, MVP is definitely not coming for Mr. Kennedy. Right. Definitely not. He's not get, he's not getting off his burned ass. Right. Well, they they were kind of frenemies anyway, right? They Yeah. They were, yeah. Oh, he's he's got the sleeper hold on him. This is like this is like my 4-year-old trying to choke me out. Just kind of hanging on my back and hoping that I sell it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And I guess that's a good strategy. Um, if he's asleep, I assume you could just put him in the car and drive away. Well, yeah. Right. You still got to pull him up. And Taker is much larger than Kennedy. Unlike JBL, they're about the same size, give or take. This is uh, a discrepancy here. All right, he got him in the back compartment. No legs or arms sticking out. Can Kennedy drive away though? Oh, he's waiting too long. Wow, it's a good thing that uh, this is not a self driving car or anything. Right. I'm going to have lost two. That'd be ridiculous. Right. Well, and Taker was waiting for him at the, uh, at the driver's door anyway. We're good. Good. so weird to see the the guardrail extended so much must be because of the flames oh probably i think the opening match was the inferno match and i did scrub through to see if there was anything else taker interviews promos and there didn't seem to be anything on it other than like they mentioned it in the opening montage but i can't believe they opened up a pay-per-view with the inferno match yeah his have it set up and then maybe they after that they went to a long video package so they could remove all that crap i, I have no idea Wow. Kennedy using that chair to equalize the match, just like JBL did. You yeah. Know, getting, getting dominated from the start. I got to make up for that by using this chair here. Just need those steel steps. Right, right. Boom. Home run chair shot to the head. Taker, uh, man, just all these chair shots to the head that he took, even in these two matches alone. Oof. Oh, I know. With I wonder how the stuff that knock you out. Right. Like all with all the stuff we know about CTE now, like, ugh. And Kennedy is getting out of dodge because Undertaker keeps sitting up and no selling the chair shots. 
and Kennedy's going to retreat by climbing the ladder in the castle. Yes. And I, again, I hadn't seen this in, I hadn't seen this since 06. I don't remember this at all. Do you? Yes. It's probably your favorite part. I remember you talking about the sets. Yeah. Yeah. I always wanted to climb the sets like in the video game. I wish they gave you the option to climb the sets. They are climbing the castle, the medieval times castle. They are climbing the medieval it. times castle. <laughs> And watching this the other day for this podcast, I'm, I'm legitimately thinking, I don't even know what happens here. I have no idea. They're kind of exchanging blows at the top, which is probably not a strategy Kennedy wants to employ. An Undertaker's bigger than him and a much better striker. They want to pull another mankind. I mean, that's like a, that's like a 15 foot drop, 10 foot drop. Oh yeah, I, I I would say fifteen. Yeah, I mean that is that's a long way to fall, and Taker looks like he's going to choke slam Kennedy straight to hell from the top of the castle, and then a kick to the nads. Oh, Kennedy throws Undertaker off. Now they don't show Taker landing. Obviously, he lands on a crash pad or a mattress. It kind of reminds me of Triple H and the Undertaker at <laughs> WrestleMania seventeen when right Taker throws. Uh, I think. Uh, Taker gets thrown off the scaffolding into a crash pad, uh, or maybe Triple H does. Um, but still, though, that's an impressive drop. Regardless if you fell on a mattress, that's pretty impressive to take that. Yeah. So now Kennedy's coming down the ladder. Oh, I didn't even jump on him. I'm weak. Dave, right, right. Yeah, you didn't kill him. Come on. Um, but now he's got to come down and check on Taker's dead body. It's like that famous horror movie ending, like... You've got the bad guy incapacitated, the monster. Now you got to go over there and kind of like, I don't know, kick him, see, him. If, see if he's really dead. Oh man. Yes. <laughs> yes. See if see if Frankenstein's really dead. Right. Undertaker has not moved since he fell on the table full of cables. The cable table. The cable table. <laughs> You just coming up with stuff on the fly, right? Well, that Kennedy just dragging the Undertaker, literally like dead weight, like pulling his arms out of the socket. Like I thought, yes, under- please, like, what yes. are you doing? <laughs> don't don't injure the Undertaker by pulling him, please. It's all Undertaker needs to be put his arms pull out of the sockets. <laughs> Look at that! Oh my God, it looks painful just watching it. I, I, after a while, I think Undertaker's like. Starts helping him a little bit because Jesus, stop. Oh, about time you do this. Okay. I hated Kennedy so bad. <laughs> As Kennedy awkwardly tries to like drag the Undertaker, they cut to the crowd or anything else. I mean, the mechanics of this match are kind of weird and awkward. I can see. Hence why they did two. Yes. Undertaker will help him by getting in the into the car. Oh. Again, Kennedy gets to shut the door. I thought this was a it was a cheesy spot coming up here, but I thought it was it was pretty neat. Uh, I'm a horror movie guy, but oh yeah, the cheesiness. Yeah, you get the driver's uh, seat camera there and shows Kennedy like putting the key in the ignition, and you can see just over Kennedy's shoulder, and you see the Undertaker. Well, eventually, I think he sits up, or I think, yeah. I mean, that's cheesy as hell, but that's pretty fun. And he's going to drag Kennedy right back to see if Kennedy would have put a seatbelt on. He wouldn't have been able to get dragged to the back there. Safety first. (laughs) (laughs) Taker drags him out by the legs. And this is where the wheels are going to start to fall off for Mr. Kennedy here. Oh, yeah. The Undertaker has achieved a special somehow after getting yes, thrown off the yes. castle. <laughs> he's got that uh, he's got that H that XP strength going on. Right. 
and he hits him with a chair shot that Kennedy kind of ducks. And now Kennedy's going to blade. So I, I guess he did hit him, I guess. Kind of weird. Meanwhile, Undertaker says, I'm going to get this steel pipe and take your head off. Yes, because apparently he must be uh, a fan of the clue game. <laughs> right. you know, get the lead pipe. In the hearse. Yeah. Uh, he misses and he, he takes out the back of the windshield. So he goes and gets the chair again instead. Why not? Yeah. And that's a no doubter. Kennedy definitely got hit. Oh. <laughs> And he is bleeding. And Taker's just going to square away on that wound. Maybe throw in a couple potatoes. Who knows? Oh, my God. As JBL just said, the hospital better get ready. The hospital better get ready. Right. He said hospital. I can't believe Vince let him say hospital. The medical facility. Yeah, right. Taker puts him on the roof here. I could have swore, and maybe I'm thinking of a different match, or maybe I'm just fantasizing it in my head. I could have swore here they go through the roof of the of the limo. They do not go through the roof of the limo. No, that's when he choke slam JBL through the roof of his limo. There you go. Through his slam. Got it. I, I could have swore I've seen that before, but that doesn't happen here. No. Uh, he does choke slam Kennedy almost worse. He just choke slams him on the car and it like just thought. Oh God. <laughs> Wonder how much how painful that was. Right. You can just see the whole car look like it was in a Dr. Dre video, like just bouncing up and down. Oh. Oh. Oh, that made a good dent. Yeah. And then uh if that's not good enough, we're gonna tombstone him now on the car. A couple more times they probably could have went through that hearse. Boom. And I'm wondering if they were trying to go through the hearse or maybe they knew it wouldn't work like that. I don't know. Either way, though, that choke slam. Ugh. He throws him off the car. And I do enjoy that, you know, Kennedy wears the the short trunks, the speedos, if you will. Uh, Undertaker has thrown a pipe into the back window of the hearse. So oh, there's broken yes. glass all over the place. And we're going to throw this naked man <laughs> into the, into the broken glass here. That's right. It's full of broken glass in the back. Yeah. Just get in there. <laughs> Taker has shut the door. So now he has to drive away. And we do get the driver's, uh, the driver's seat, uh, camera for taker to take his his giant seven foot frame right he's got like his knees as at, at his ears yeah look how intense he looks is he like does he look in that intense while driving to like the grocery store <laughs> i would hope so <laughs> i gotta get some milk <laughs> i would hope i would hope that if you're driving next to the undertaker he's just that intense driving all the time <laughs> yes and you see the entryway opens up and Undertaker drives out. Where the hell does he go? I don't know. Hopefully he doesn't get T-boned this time. He probably just, he probably goes, just going to drop off Mr. Kennedy at the nearest hospital. Right. Or medical facility. Yeah. <laughs> He's like a, a forerunner to Uber. <laughs> and the Undertaker officially one and one. Yes. In last ride matches. He's one and one in last ride matches. Yeah. They, um, Taker, of course, as you said, he'll go on to win the Royal Rumble next month. And he's on yeah. to Batista at WrestleMania 23 to win the title. Yeah. Kennedy is on the rise, too. I mean, he gets a pretty good rub from this feud, even though he doesn't get the last laugh. He goes on to win money in the bank at yes. WrestleMania 23. Although, and he says, I'm calling my shot. I'm going to cash this in in 11 months at WrestleMania 24, but we all know he has a tendon, um, a triceps injury, actually. So he's got a triceps injury. I don't think it was as bad as they thought it was going to be, but they get the briefcase off him by having edge beat him. Yes. In May. So edge goes on with the briefcase and Mr. Kennedy never really, never really gets that high ever again. Uh, no. And he, he's released in 2009. Although, 
even though he's released in 2009, you think, well, that's the end of Mr. Kennedy. He goes on to be TNA champion. I mean, he has six years in impact and he is their world champion at one point. So, wow. He does okay for himself, not undertaker. Okay. But he does okay for himself. Right. Of course. Well, I I looked it up. There was no other, I just wanted to confirm no other last ride matches. I didn't know if maybe there was one without taker somehow, some way. Oh, sure. Um, but there was no other last ride matches. I did remember the ambulance match, which is a close cousin, I think, of the last ride match. You just yes. take out the hearse and put in a meat wagon, you know, put in the old ambulance. Yep. Um, it was made popular in late WCW when Mike Awesome had a bunch of ambulance matches in 2000. That was like his gimmick, his, uh, it was his match. And of course, I think the most popular ambulance matches Kane and Shane McMahon at Survivor yes. Series 03 and then a uh, couple of ones I didn't remember though like John Cena and Kane Elimination Chamber 2012 hmm. so I'm like okay well Kane again so maybe that's like Kane's match but then Bray Wyatt and Dean Ambrose have one on Raw 2015 don't remember that me either Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns uh, ambulance match. Great Balls of Fire pay-per-view 2017. I do remember that pay-per-view. I don't remember that match. Me too. And then the last ambulance match was the Class of the Champions 2020. Um, So this is the, I assume, the pandemic era. Nobody there. Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton. Clash of the Champions ambulance match. Nice. There's four or five of them, close cousin, but no other last ride matches. So I was thinking about all the times, you know, they used hearses in WWF, which you remember the Attitude Era. They used a hearse all the time. Everybody wanted to destroy a hearse to Mm -hmm. get under the Undertaker's skin. Um, They had, I think they had a hearse and a Buried Alive match or two as like a prop. Um, Yeah. But I think you would agree the best use of a hearse in the WWF was always that SummerSlam 92 entrance at yes. Wembley Stadium when he yeah. rode on the back. That was like his first big entrance, right? Before he yeah. had those, he had the Kamala entrance at SummerSlam. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, of all matches, the Kamala match. Right. Yeah. And I remember, I think I was 11 for that. I don't think I understood until somebody explained it to me. Like, oh, cool. The Undertaker, it's a really long, it's Wembley. So it's a really long aisle way. He didn't walk. So he rode on the back of this car. Oh, that's cool. And I think somebody had to explain to me, like, that's a hearse, like dead people ride in that car. I'm like, oh, I don't think 11 year old me got it. I'm just like, <laughs> cool. He just rode on the back of this Buick to get to the <laughs> ring. Like on this back of this Buick. Right. Like no big deal. Right. But eventually I was like, oh, oh, I get yeah, it. So, yeah, there's a, there's an actual casket in the back. Yes, there is. That's right. Yes. Would have been cooler if it played into the match, but it didn't. Not that, that should have been no casket match. It should have been, right. Um, and speaking of hearses, I wanted to pour one out for my my wobble rumbler that I broke. Oh, no. My Undertaker inflatable pool toy that you can get at your target pool aisle for $9.99 on discount. You broke it? I think I busted him from the start. I got to say, because they're, you know, I feel like I'm a fairly smart individual, better than the average bear. I would say. They they give you that red pen. Yeah. And the directions say, insert red pen into the hole in his back. And you're like, cool. They don't say stop here. Or like, there's no indication on the red pen where to stop. So I shoved it in pretty deep from the get-go, especially Uh-oh. when I shoved, I shoved it in and I couldn't, I couldn't get any of the air to like go into the actual doll. Oh yeah. He pipe punctured. Yeah. I said, Oh, I need to shove it in further. So when I did it, it, I don't think it broke it, but I think I pushed it in too far and then he didn't retain air. Oh, like, so I would put that, I put that undertaker hat on him when we got our hats and within like, it used to be once a week or once every 10 days, I'd have to refill him. He'd get pretty low. I'm like, all right, that's not, that's not too bad. I put the hat on him and then it was like every other day. And then it became like every day, like I'd come downstairs and he'd be on the floor. Like, and I'm like, why isn't he holding? Like, why isn't he holding air? Another one. So then I put the pen in the last time I put the pen in and again, it was too far. And now I think I, 
I busted through it completely. And he was just, I could, I, it would, it would come out as fast as I could blow it in. Yeah. Yeah. You need to get yeah. yourself another one. Yeah. I hope he's still there. Cause I know those are kind of, um, those are kind of old. Yeah. About a year, year or so. Yeah. So I hope that they're still there. So hopefully I can get another one. Uh, if not, I worked on a different replacement, which will hopefully be here for the next podcast. So Ooh. I will, I will have to bust him out then. Ooh, I wonder, I wonder what that is. We'll have to see. Uh, I have no other like additions, notable additions to my collection other than those I've been tweeting about my WWF magazines. So yes, yes. I talked about it at the, at the boiler room brawl. I meant it like when I went through the boiler room brawl for the last one that we did, I, it really kind of sparked me. I remembered that WWF magazine that said rest in pieces. And yeah, with the urn. And I, so I went out and got that one. And then I found a couple other taker ones on the cover where it was like, you know, six bucks, eight bucks. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, what the hell? So I probably got four or five of them just to kind of like look at and peruse. So I'm tweeting about them and going through them. I don't know if I'll have, I'll get every Undertaker cover ever because he has so many. And oh, I know he does. But I got, I got a lot of them already and I bought four or five more and then we'll see when I get through those, maybe I'll buy some more, but you know, there's one from 1995 where it's him and Paul bear and then he's on a motorcycle and yeah. then oh, there's a bunch of other guys on motorcycles, but I haven't found that one for under 10 bucks or under. It's always like Ooh. 15, 20. And I'm like, mm, mm. I'm not oh. doing that. I'll wait it out for a deal ski. You always got to wait for a deal ski. Yes. You got to get a deal. So no other notable um, additions to my collection, um, but except for that one that's coming, I'll oh. show you. I'll show you next month, hopefully. Can't wait. Toys though, we always talk about toys, and I've got a couple on display here. So, and you tell me if there's any. I know you said we need a Mattel representation of the Undertaker that we saw today, the 04, 05, 06 ish both, Undertaker. Yeah, both versions of him. And I so the two best versions I could think of top of my head were, and I just dug them out of the detolf. It's so much easier when the detolf's in the same room. So I love the new house. Um, <laughs> I thought about the classic superstars, uh, 13, the LJN undertaker. He's, yes. He kind of looks like the generic 0406 undertaker. Very underrated figure. It's like very statuesque, but I like it. And few, one of the few figures I could think of where his eyes are just completely whited out. Like he's a demon, you know? So yeah. I was like, Ooh, that's a good one. And then I thought about, uh, Mattel series one. Yes. Again, another decent generic undertaker, but not 1990, 1995. This is very post biker taker. Like yes. I'm returned as the dead man. So I thought, Oh, that's, a, I think that's a good representation of generic undertaker. Yeah, I would say I so. I think he came out in 2010 and I think he is, I think he might be 07. So he's not too far off from what we just watched when he came yeah. out too. Yeah. It's good representations of him. Yeah. I thought that wasn't too bad. And I, I might've talked about him before, but I don't think I've talked about him before. No, so. I don't think so. Yeah. I, I, it was one of those times I told my wife, I'm all done. I'm all caught up on taker toys. They're not making any until a new one comes out. I'm good. And then I found out they made an LJN quote unquote undertaker. And I was like, Oh, it was like literally the next day I told my wife, I'm done until they come out with something new. I'm done. And then literally the next day I'm like, Oh no, they have an LJN. So well, I went out, I went out and got the LJN. You're never done. You can never be done. No, no. Well, and then you, well, like we have this group text from hell, you, <laughs> me and Alex Dorio and like, they came just this week. They came out with Undertaker Phenom shorts that say Phenom across the crotch, which is odd. And then they, that shirt that you showed us, I think that's right. a good shirt. Yeah. On Shop Zone. That shirt, the muscle shirt. Yes. The, the Phenom shorts. I mean, WWE Shop just wants all my money. I haven't, I don't know if you've acted yet. I haven't ordered them yet, but I'm waiting maybe for if they're like a midsummer deal ski, you know, if they put a little 10% off sale or $5 off t-shirt sale, like I might jump on some of that stuff. Yes. Yes. If they knock down those shirts, I think I will buy those too. The Phenom yeah. one and the, uh, the tank top. Yeah. I don't have, I'm not really, I don't have a lot of tank tops, but I, I love, I'm looking for, if anybody out there has it, I'm looking for that final shirt, that final biker taker shirt. Um, the one he wears against McMahon. Right. And that's what that is. It's a tank top, but that's what that one is on, on WWE shop right now. They don't, they don't put the stuff on the back. It's only the logo on the front. Yeah. 
Um, I would, yeah. So if they put that on sale, does have to be clearance, but even just sale, I might think yeah. about getting that. I don't know about the shorts. Eh, you maybe can't wear the shorts out. Right. Like, what are you going to do with that? Maybe around the house, like bumming around the house. But yeah, if they put that on, um, they put those on clearance. I might go for the shorts, but if they do a little sales ski, I might get that shirt that you pointed out with yeah. it's, what is a taker in purple. Yes. And it's like 1990. It's 90, like, it's like neon type. I love it. 90, 92 taker. It's like OG type taker, I would say, or close. Yeah. That's a good, uh, that's a good representation. I would, I might have to pick that up. Yeah, me too. So are we going to talk about our calendar for the rest of the year? Yes, I would say that's how we round out this episode. Yes. With, with what we have planned for the rest of the year. We are, um, well, I think, I think the best thing to do in July was how we was, um, you know, it's July is hotter than hell. So it really is. So there's no match better. There's no matches better than the inferno matches where hell has no pizza for Paul Bearer. <laughs> you can't get too close and it will become hotter than hell in the arena. Well, I mean, so, it's in, you know, July in Minnesota is an inferno. I imagine for you, it's pretty much all year round, but especially in July. Yes, of course. That's perfect. So it's Undertaker battles Kane in both inferno matches in July, um, August. We have the Jeff Hardy specials where he faces him in the, the ladder match and the extreme rules match on SmackDown. I remember the, I mean, we all remember the ladder match, right? That was a hell of a match. Um, I don't remember the extreme rules match from like 2008, like one iota, not at all. Barely. I barely remember it. So it'll be a good chance to revisit that. I can't yes. wait. Yes. Uh, September. It's the one and only Chairs match against Batista. And we're pairing that with the one and only Biker Chain match against Brock Lesnar at No Mercy the year prior from this one's No Mercy, No Mercy 2003. Yeah, I think you've done the Chairs match with, was it Keegan that you did it with at Batista? Who'd you do the Batista ride with? It will, yeah, you have not finished it yet. It will be with Keegan. Gotcha. And then we'll, we'll get to it again in September. I don't know why I, we talked about pairing the chairs match with biker chain, other than C's chair chain. They it, only have, they only have one a piece. What the hell? One a piece. What the hell? It's two big <laughs> monsters. Undertaker has to battle. Yep. So it, it just fits. Uh, October, uh, because it is a scary month of Halloween. Nothing yes. better then the scary matches of the Rest in Peace and the Concrete Crypt, the two most, as you put it, the lowest rated right. <laughs> matches. So it makes you just scream in terror trying to watch these. So I thought those two would be the best ones to act on for that month. I, I, I can't wait for October when, you know, because everybody loves Concrete Crypt and Rest in Peace match with Giant Gonzalez, right? Definitely. I can't wait for there to be three listeners me you and possibly alex dorio maybe we could if you want to we'll see if alex dorio wants to come on and give us a ratings boost for that one and then we'll have three people that listen to it wonderful <laughs> yes uh why not november uh i think it's the best time it'll be uh two years from his official retirement so it's only best to see the last match up to now the boneyard match yeah you threw that one in there that's uh, i like that one that's nice yeah, yeah. And uh, December would be his last man standing matches because it is the last month of the year. That's so it true. is the last man standing matches. I know of the one with the great Kali. What is the other one? I don't know that I remember. Doesn't he have one with Batista at Backlash, right? I think. Yes. And he, there's three. So I knew there was, there's, uh, I looked it up. I thought there was three last man standing matches. And those are two of them. Okay, definitely. That's right. Batista, Batista at um, Backlash 2007. Um, Great Kali on SmackDown I'm, 2006. I'm showing the big show being the other one at Last yes. Man Standing Cyber Sunday 2008. Big show, Cyber Sunday 2008. 
which I remember 2008. I mean, he's feuded with Big Show every five minutes his entire <laughs> career. But I remember the 2008 feud in particular because it was like, I think Big Show was coming after him. Like they had a match at No Way Out that year. And I'm like in WrestleMania for us Undertaker fans, special time of the year, uh, especially when he, even when he was full time, like WrestleMania was a big time, was a big deal. And like, he's feuding with Big Show and it's still February. And I'm like, oh, oh no. Oh no, please no Big Show at WrestleMania. I had to sit through that in 03. I don't want to do it again. So thankfully, no big show at WrestleMania that year, but we will, yeah. he, we had him at no way out and we'll, we'll get to him at uh, apparently extreme rules. Yeah. Or Cyber Sunday. Cyber, Cyber Sunday. Sunday. He is, yeah. he fights big show at what was it? It was no way out 2003, which leads you to the eight train big show match at WrestleMania. Oh, right. And then they revisit in 2008 where he big show defeats him by knockout at no mercy what Undertaker at No Mercy? He's got no absolutely no luck at No Mercy, right? It because it has no mercy. Yeah, yeah. absolutely no luck. <laughs> uh, but then he meets Big Show again at Survivor Series in a casket match. But before then, he gets Cyber Sunday, Last Man Standing, and that's where those three matches will be: Great Kali, Batista, and the Big Show. Boy, we're giving them Kali for Christmas. Boy, that's a coal. That's coal in your stocking. <laughs> Not even Michael Cole. Not even Michael Cole. <laughs> but that's the rest of the year planned out. Of course, as we always say, we could pivot card subject to change if anything else happens. Right. If Taker makes a grand return or if something unbelievable happens, or if there's just some great merch and we're like, dude, we gotta wear, we gotta wear these new hats. We gotta exactly. do something with era. <laughs> exactly. So that's where we are right now. And um, next year, we will get into the heavy hitter matches. We get into the Hell in the Cells, the Buried Alives, uh, the Extreme Rules matches, like the Casket. uh, Caskets. Casket might be a whole year onto itself. We'll have to look it up. (laughs) My God. We have to probably do like two or three an episode. Right. I do think if we could shorten it up a little bit, if we do a couple, like two at a time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure some of those are like the Big Show match and the Rusev match. They're quick, eight minutes long. We can do both those. And maybe even like Kamala, the first one, the coffin match, I'm sure we'll slide in with caskets. But uh, I'm sure that one by 1992 standards is pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, I would say. So I am excited for the rest of the year and beyond. Hope you are as well. We're going to be doing this until we have like full white beards. We're going to be old men. It's going to be awesome. I, I am sure we will. I am yes. Sure and uh, anything to promote before we sign off? Nope. Just my usual rantings over at Pokey's little dog on Twitter. I should yes. change that to the ultimate lawyer. You I really to, should. You need to but, change it to the ultimate lawyer. Uh, but at, for now at Pokey's little dog yes. and uh, my, my rantings on all things undertaker horror movies. I've watched that week, uh, usually on the treadmill this week in treadmill mm-hmm. horror. And um reviewing my WWF magazines lately. So I just, I like to go through the magazines from the nineties, usually with undertaker on the front. And I'd like to point out dumb stuff. I, I loved that uh, they had an article about the dragon, you know, and they go all about through the mythology of the dragon and China and what that means in the, when it's the year of the dragon. And like Mm -hmm. they show pictures of the guy who's playing the dragon, very clear pictures of Ricky steamboat. And they don't mention Ricky steamboat, which is a fairly big name. Like that's like Ric Flair type name in wrestling and they don't mention Ricky Steamboat who also, I know he's, I know he's from down South, but like, he's also worked for your promotion at that point and been the intercontinental champion. And they don't mention Ricky Steamboat once. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought that was interesting. So I like to read back, you know, from 30 years ago and just see some of the stuff that they did. Yeah. Quite interesting. I, I enjoy your tweets and if, and I'm sure if I enjoy it and all of you listening will enjoy it as well. So make sure to follow Randy at Pokey's Little Dog on Twitter. And uh, while you're there, follow me at Collect Up Dead and on Instagram at Collecting Dead Man. And if you are watching on YouTube, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, creatures of the night, keep on rolling. I am looking forward to what we have for the rest of the year. Thank you, Randy. Thank you.